Oh, it's still a little dark in here. Oh yeah, yeah, that's better. That's better. Whoo! <laughs> Sorry, I hit my head on the microphone. What do you want me to do? What's the craziest thing you were afraid of as a kid? You know, the thing that made you feel kind of like this? Or where you were so scared to be in your room at night without a light on that you reacted like this? Or maybe you were scared of getting shots at the doctor. I mean, I still am. Or just the thought of going made you feel just like this. Now, while I didn't have any of these exact fears, I definitely had things I was scared of when I was younger. Now, this might seem a little bit weird, but when I was young, I used to be scared that if I ate the seed of the fruit I was eating, like an apple seed or a watermelon seed, that it would actually start to grow that tree inside of my stomach. I know, I know that that is probably a little bit weird, but listen, could you imagine how scary that would be? If you actually had a fruit tree growing in your stomach, it's scary. Okay, maybe that was a little bit of a stretch, but we were all probably scared of things as kids that as we get older, they just don't seem as scary. I mean, I'm not scared of a tree growing in my stomach anymore, but now that we're a little bit older, I think we probably have new things, bigger things, more serious things we might be afraid of. And today, we'll talk about the feeling behind the stuff we're afraid of, fear. The truth is, we all know what it's like to feel fear. We all know what it's like to be afraid of something. And some of our fears are really common, things like talking in public or snakes or spiders, you know? I bet quite a few of us here today have at least one of those fears, that's pretty normal, but some of us may have some really unique and uncommon fears. Uh, I actually asked some of my friends what they were afraid of. Here's what they said. Guys, I'm terrified of worms. Worms, when they crawl around and they're just like, they just creep me out, they make my skin crawl. Roller coasters. I'm not very tall, I'm like 5'1", maybe, and just, you know, like when you get in the roller coaster and the little handlebar comes down and you gotta put the seatbelt on, like, it doesn't, like, fit against my lap. And so when I go on a roller coaster, I literally feel like I'm going to just fly right off of the roller coaster and just, like, be gone forever. Clowns, I don't like them. I mean, they paint their faces and sometimes they talk, but sometimes they don't. They're just like, oh, <laughs> come here, little kids. No, get away from me, clown. For sure, snakes, okay? <laughs> Terrified of cats. The dark. Yes, I'm 36 years old and I have night lights all over my house. I don't like the dark. And the second thing, squirrels. I don't like squirrels. I am not afraid to admit that I am still scared of storms. When I hear that first thunder, you know I am running to take cover and do not even get me started on lightning. Okay, those were some really interesting phobias. I had no idea that some people were scared of squirrels. I mean, the fluffy tail and all, but when I think about it, I could actually see it. I can imagine with those two giant front teeth and all, like staring at you. Yeah, I could see that, I understand that. But regardless of what we're scared of, we all have something in common. We all experience fear at some point in our lives. And for some of you, fear is a really big deal. The stuff you're afraid of, you think about it all the time. It may be the only thing that you think about. But for others of you, fear isn't really something you think about very often. Sure, you might be worried about things in your life, but the minute fear creeps in, you just push it aside. No matter how you manage fear, what's interesting is that our imagination seems to play a big part in experiencing fear. The stuff we're usually most afraid of is the stuff we imagine might happen to us. Or the stuff we imagine that will be said about us, that that we fear that, or the stuff that we can't control or we don't see coming or we don't know how to handle it if it does come. The stuff we can only imagine. And when we let fear take over our minds and motivate our thoughts, it leads our imagination down a path of endless what ifs. Like, what if I never have the friends I want? Or, or what if my parents get divorced? Or what if I never get taller? Or what if my sister doesn't get better? Or what if my girlfriend or my boyfriend breaks up with me? What if God isn't actually real? Or what if I fail my class? That would be terrible, but it's math, so it's likely. Or what if we have to move? What if I get in trouble? 
What if somebody finds out what's gonna happen then? What if I don't make the team? What if I never feel any different than the way that I feel right now? What if my acne never goes away? See what I mean? Fear takes us down a path of endless worry. It gets our imaginations going about the things that could be or might be or we hope never will be. It takes over our thinking. And when we're faced with our fears, like when we actually come face to face with those fears, most of us usually have one of three responses. When we're faced with fear, some of us fight against it. We act on it. We try to control the things that we can control to keep the things we fear from actually happening. Those of you who do this, you know how this feels. Maybe you maybe you yell at your dad to take care of himself because you're afraid he'll get sick. Or you try to force your sibling to avoid that party because you're worried about what might happen if she does go, or you study way, way more than you need to. I know, that's a minority of us, but you study way more than you need to for that test because you're afraid that you'll fail it if you don't. You focus on what you can control. You fight back against the fear by trying to take control of it yourself. And you don't give up until you feel like you fixed it or stopped it or done whatever you can, whatever's in your power to keep the fear from actually coming true. Now, others of you face fear by not facing it at all. I mean, fear, fear motivates you to not fight back. You didn't connect at all with the first response to fear. You're like, no, I'm the total opposite. I run in the opposite direction. Maybe you avoid asking questions because of the fear that it will lead you to doubt your faith, or you stay away from your friends when they hurt your feelings because you don't want to face the fear that they might actually reject you. You're afraid you won't get the lead in the play, so you just don't try out for it at all. For you, fear sends you running away from and avoid avoiding the things that you're worried about or afraid of altogether. And finally, for some of you, fear simply freezes you in your tracks. It paralyzes you. You get stuck when you're faced with the fear that something bad will happen or, or you'll be disappointed or that things won't turn out the way that you hoped. You can't get past it. You can't do anything but hide out and pull the covers back over your head and, and stay there until the fear hopefully passes. But here's the thing, y'all. Fear is natural. It's real. We all experience it no matter what age we are. And, and I'm not here to tell you that you should never be afraid of anything because honestly, there's a lot of stuff to be afraid of and fear can actually be good, okay? Fear in some cases can be helpful because it helps us avoid or be cautious around things that could hurt us. Like you should be afraid of the fire because it should burn you. There, there are some healthy fears, but the issue is when fear begins to take over when it becomes the boss of our actions, our thoughts, and our life. That is when we need to figure out a new way to face our fears. One of the best things about the Bible is that it gives us examples of real people who had real experiences and real feelings just like yours. And today, we're gonna take a look at an experience some of Jesus' closest followers had that I think can teach us a lot about what we can do in the face of fear. Now, while on earth, Jesus spent most of his time with a group of 12 people. They were his disciples his closest followers at that time, and also his closest friends. Now, because they spent so much time with Jesus, they saw him do some amazing things, heal sick people, forgive sins, do miracles. So you'd think that as his closest friends, they would have nothing to fear, right? I mean, after all, they're hanging out with the guy who could literally do anything. What could they have possibly been afraid of with Jesus on their side? Well. Take a look at what a guy named Matthew, one of those disciples, wrote down about the life and ministry of Jesus. Then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. Okay. So the disciples are traveling in this boat with Jesus when all of a sudden a huge storm rolled in. The, the waves are so high that they're literally sweeping over the boat. And what's Jesus doing? Shh. 
napping. I don't know if Jesus snored actually like in his holiness. Does he not snore? I don't really know how that happens. But as the storm was getting bigger and scarier, the disciples did what I would have done. They freaked out. I mean, come on, wouldn't you? They got scared in the face of this storm. They thought they had something to fear. So they woke up Jesus, probably thinking, um, hello, Jesus. He replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. So what did Jesus do? Exactly what only he was capable of doing. He calmed the storm. He took the very thing that these disciples were afraid of and stopped it in its tracks. He eased their fears, not only by stopping the wind and the waves, but by proving that there was something else that we can choose in the face of fear, faith. Look back at what Jesus said when the disciples woke him up. You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Now, while I can't be sure because I obviously wasn't there, I don't think Jesus said this just because he was mad at the disciples or, or frustrated at their faith levels. I don't think he was trying to make them feel bad at all for not having enough faith. I think he was trying to show them that faith can help overcome their fear. I mean, did these disciples have a reason to be afraid? Yes. They were on a boat in the middle of a huge storm. That's scary. But Jesus wanted them to know that their fear didn't have to be the only thing that they felt because there's something or someone who's more capable and more powerful than fear. And that's Jesus. While we may not be physically tossed around in a storm on the ocean, sometimes our fear can feel a lot like that. But when we experience fear, we have more options than just to fight or to flight or to freeze. We have faith. That's what Jesus offers us. See, fear doesn't have to be the boss of you. Fear comes when we feel out of control. But the truth is, when we're out of control, Jesus is still in control. You can trust him. We can trust him when we're in the middle of a storm. Will we still have reasons to be afraid in life? Yes, I'm not saying that having faith means you never fear again, but what I'm saying is that faith is what gets us through fear. It's with us in fear, and it will be with us when the fear is gone. Fear doesn't have to be the boss of you. And like the disciples, Jesus offers us an alternative to fear. He offers us faith. So what do we do with our fears? The next time that we're faced with something to be scared of, what do we do? Well, take a look at one more scripture with me for an answer. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. What I love about this verse is that it was written by Peter, a disciple of Jesus who was on the very boat in the middle of the storm. So when Peter wrote this, he wrote from experience. He knew what it's like to experience fear. And he also knew what it's like to put his faith in Jesus in the midst of it. When Peter said cast, he's not talking about necessarily like cast. He, although he was a fisherman, he went like throw or hurl or, or heave. These are active words. That means this won't happen by accident. When you feel fear, you have to choose to take it and throw it to Jesus. And why do we do this? Well, we throw our fear on Jesus because he cares for us. And when I think about throwing them, I think about like a shot putter who's holding all of this weight because so many times fear feels like a weight on our shoulders and he gives us the opportunity to literally throw or hurl our fear on him. And so how, how do we do this? We can pray. We can talk to him about our fears. We can invite him into them. We can focus on all the things that we know are true about Jesus and we can let our faith in his ability to handle our fears help us overcome them. So this week, that's where I want you to start. Think about what fears you're facing right now. Big or small, they all matter here. Write them down, say them aloud, put some words to what you're feeling, and then one by one, take them to Jesus. Throw them over to him. 
Ask him to help you have faith that he is in control. Pray that he'll be with you in the middle of your storm. Give your fears to him and ask him to walk you through them. And remember, fear doesn't have to be the boss of you. And maybe you need a little help talking about or even identifying what it is that you're afraid of. Maybe you need someone to encourage you to trust Jesus in the middle of your fear. Well, the good news is that's exactly what your group leader is for. They're here to help you walk through the circumstances or situations that might be causing you to fear. And they're here to remind you that even if your circumstances don't change, you can walk through them with confidence and faith in Jesus who is in control of it all. So as you go today, I want you to think about this question. How do I usually respond to fear?